Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Jeffrey Epstein died some weeks ago, months ago at this point. But basic questions remain unanswered. Among them, why do powerful people appear to be covering up for him still? There's a new development in the Jeffrey Epstein story tonight. We're going to bring you in just a minute. We're sticking around for it. But first tonight, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg appears to be running for president. Now, in the plus column, Bloomberg is one of the richest people in America. More than $10 million. More money than he could ever spend. He's also highly popular on the set of the MSNBC Morning Show. And he's absolutely beloved on Martha's Vineyard during the summer months. Again, that's the upside to the candidacy. On the other hand, Bloomberg is not exactly the man that Democratic primary voters picture when they dream about their ideal candidate. Maybe that's why prominent Democrats reacted to the news today this way. Well, John, do you think the country really wants another New York billionaire uh, after Donald Trump? Usually we elect the opposite. We very often underestimate the level of affection there is among Democratic voters for Joe Biden. Mike Bloomberg, whatever his, you know, whatever good things you can say about him, he just doesn't have. This feels a little bit like a Hail Mary for a certain uh, class of folks. I think it would be more genuine if he were to actually run as a Republican, given his record. I don't see any room here. He's a relatively ideal ideologically neutral billionaire, and there are zero people clamoring for that right now. And David, Mike Bloomberg is also another white septuagenarian who is entering the race as well. Many asking if that's something that we need at, at this point. Oh, he's a white man, says the CNN anchor. Many people are asking if we need that right now. Well, you can mock and dismiss that, but for a party increasingly controlled like racial commissars, like the one you just saw, Brianna Goldriga, Bloomberg is a pretty tough sell. The Democratic base is not exactly clamoring for their own elderly billionaire candidate, as you just heard, and that's true. But here's the problem. On the other hand, Wall Street liberals, and there are many of those, are not happy about Elizabeth Warren either. And that, when you take three steps back, is the real story here. You're not watching a united, confident political party. This is what it looks like when a party declares war on itself. The core problem is there is a massive gap between the components of the Democratic coalition, between Nantucket and the Bronx, between unionized auto workers in Ohio and non-binary trans activists of color in San Francisco. It turns out the Democratic coalition has essentially nothing in common. So for the first three years of the Trump administration, that hasn't been a problem. Everyone's been so focused on hating Trump, orange man bad. But suddenly they have to pick a contender, their own nominee. And suddenly, this is a real problem. Some of us are enjoying it, by the way. 